Hello there and welcome to another episode of Gotham Talk. We're up to episode 21 of season one and this one's called The Anvil or the Hammer. A title that even now I don't quite understand. I don't know if I missed something, a line of dialogue that alluded to that or whether it's a famous saying that I've never heard and I should just automatically know what it's referring to. But yeah, it, it's a title that I'm, I'm, it's a bit lost on me. So if, if anybody knows what it's refer referencing, what it's what it's all about, then uh, yeah, comment below and let me know. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a decent episode. As usual, different things going on it. We tie up, well, we, I guess we kind of tie up the storyline involving the ogre. Obviously, I think it will have ramifications further on. Um, you know, it's maybe in the last episode and certainly into season two with regards to Barbara Keane. But as for the ogre himself, yeah, <clears throat> he's, he's done, he's dusted. Uh, I'm surprised they did it here, to be honest. I thought it would have been in the final episode, uh, just, just because it, it seemed to have been quite a big storyline towards the end of the season, you know, to introduce this guy, kind of make, make this big villain in, a, in a, this three-part episode. So, it's, it, yeah, it's quite surprising that they kill him off just before the last episode. Um, yeah, I like the way they go. You know, him and him and Gordon get to have a, a decent fight. Um, I, I, I think the the storyline in which he's kind of messing with Barbara's head, I like the idea of it. I, I I'm not so sure it's executed in the best way. It's it's not awful. Don't get me wrong, but uh, and I, I'm not sure if it's. I'm not sure if some of it's down to Erin Richards' performance. Although, like I say, they I I think they go from. Uh, strong woman who's been captured who's a bit hysterical to who's completely kind of separated from reality by the time we get to the end of the episode i think we go through that process just a little bit too quickly i don't think they give erin richards enough to go through as an actress as a character to get from point a to point B um, or point C, whatever uh, you know. It, like I say, it, it's good. I like it, but it, I, I feel like it could have been better. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe that element did need to be stretched out over two episodes because you know, uh, like she only met this guy in the last episode, and he's only revealed himself, his true self, to her in this one. So you know, if we go from that to her being totally lost the plot by the end it's just a bit too quick for me um yeah bullock i i just love bullock what can i say i absolutely love bullock uh, it, it's down to that performance uh i i always forget names i'm terrible with names uh but the actor who plays bullock is just so spot on isn't it it just he nails that character um but uh yeah he he gets to go into this uh, weird kind of S and M club, trying to find out information on the ogre. Gordon sends him there, and it's just a hilarious scene because Bullock is someone who doesn't exactly have a weak constitution when it comes to getting into, you know, the more seedier side of life. He's 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 not the most clean cut of characters. But going into this place, even things in there that we that, that we don't get to see because they're off screen, but they. They even get Bullock to say, you know, actually, no, no, enough is enough. And, and that's, it's a really funny moment. And again, because of the performance by the actor, just hysterical. Uh, yeah, Bullock I love as per usual. Um, what else do we have? We have Penguin's plan coming to fruition. So it looked like Penguin was going to kill Moroni. And the twist is that actually, no, he's just setting Falcone up. Um, so he actually ends up setting the, the, the hitmen up so that they end up getting killed so that Moroni thinks it was Falcone and then starts a gang war. So this episode basically finishes with Moroni going, going nuts on Falcone's uh, organisation, uh, doing three surprise attacks uh, and, and, and the police essentially saying that like all of the business now is focused on that. All of the business aside, we focus on this because we've got gang war going on in the streets. Um, so yeah, that's I like that conclusion. The the bit where Maroney and his men shoot up this car, 
really cinematic, has a proper kind of Godfather type or good, more Goodfellas type feel to it. Um, and yeah, Penguin, bit of a snidey bugger, isn't it? Uh, Robin Lord Taylor clearly having fun with that role, with with this role in in this episode. Uh, the, the other element in the episode which I really liked was Nigma. So last episode he killed the the annoying douchebag cop who was was kind of kind of going out with uh, again Kringle. That's the name. I always forget her. I'm just rubbish with names. Uh, so Miss Kringle, uh, you know, he, he was going out with her, but he was not particularly nice with her quite abusive and Nigma ended up killing him, stabbing him and here he's essentially getting rid of the body so he spends the entire episode getting rid of the body um, kind of breaking it down with acid and then and then yeah smashing up the skull and and it's quite amusing you know it's, it's dark it's twisted but it's quite amusing because of the way that it's played and because Nigma is you know there's, there's this bit when he uh kind of he first brings the body in and he's chanting to himself and he's saying no body n uh, n no no murder no body no murder you know or, or something like that no body no evidence or something like that and it, it's just yeah it's really amusing and a particular moment when miss kringle comes walking in um you know she actually well she actually knocks on the door because he's got it locked and and he just lets her in you know he doesn't he doesn't come up with an excuse like oh, go, please come back later something like that he lets her in and the body the chopped up body of of her lover if you want to call it call him that is just there or and and she doesn't recognize it because it's it's so mangled up but it's it's just twisted you know what i mean it's it's twisted that he would do that and that she sees essentially her boyfriend's body all chopped up and, and doesn't even know it. Um, final moment with Nigma when you, you really do see the Riddler starting to come out because uh, he just can't help himself, can he? You know, he leaves this note for Miss Kringle, supposedly from her, her fella who, who he killed and chopped up. Um, and, and yeah, it has this down that if if you look at just down the uh the one side on the left hand side each sentence you know starts with a letter from nigma's name so it reads nigma down the side it's it's a nice touch i like um cuz that is the riddler's character in it he just can't help himself even if it's even if it got him caught he just can't help himself time and time again in the comic books riddler would have got away with things if he could just stop with those damn riddles and puddle, puzzles. And uh, yeah, so I love that. I love that moment. It's, it's a nice touch. Uh, so yeah, good, solid episode. Like I say, the, the, the only criticism really for me is just I think they could have could have spaced out that um, the, the rapid decline of Barbara across a couple of episodes rather than cramming it all in here. Um, it's probably unfair to blame Erin, Erin Richards for that. I think it's more down to the writing. Um, but on the whole, good stuff. I give it a four out of five. But yeah, that sets me up for the season closer, which we will have next week. Um, you know, any, any TV series, you expect the final episode of any season to, to be one of the best of the season. So I'm looking forward to that and then looking forward to getting into season two. But if you have any thoughts on this particular episode, please leave them down below. And until next time, cracking.